This is the Grand Bazaar, one of the oldest covered markets in the world. It's home to over 3,000 shops with visitors all over the world haggling with shopkeepers to get the biggest bang for their buck. When you look around though, you may see something familiar. Stores selling the same product, all bunched together. Jewelry, fabrics, furniture, carpets, leather goods and clothes. Now, how do they all make money? Don't they steal each other's business? Well, not really. There's something called game theory and it's supposed to help people understand why humans make certain decisions. And its explanation goes something like this. Let's think about two ice cream carts that are on a beach. We can think of the beach as a straight line that goes from one end to the other. If the two ice cream carts are spread out evenly across the beach, the one on the left will get all the customers on the left side. And the one on the right will get all the customers on the right side. So each ice cream seller wants to be closer to more customers. And the way to achieve that is moving closer to the middle. When the cart on the right moves closer to the middle, it steals the other ice cream seller's customers. Now it has more than half of the sales. The cart owner on the left considers this situation and moves to the right, regaining some of its customers. Ultimately, they both end up at the center of the beach, which makes them equally close to all the customers on the beach, so they split them evenly. None of them will want to move away from the center. This is the reason why businesses cluster next to each other. Everyone wants a central location to be close to as many customers as possible. The economic ideas that gave rise to the cluster are different than the ones that keep it going. Trade in the bazaar until the mid-19th century was characterized by indifference to profit. The reason for this lies in the guild system. Guilds provided a safety net for merchants by buying and equitably distributing raw materials to their members. They protected consumers by setting price limits and imposing quality standards. So, the merchants back in the day didn't have the incentive to get as many customers as possible, unlike the ice cream sellers on the beach. The location for each type of merchandise was established in the early days of the Grand Bazaar. Through a gradual process, shops of traveling merchants evolved into permanent locations. As the number of shops increased, a cluster formed. The guild structured and stabilized these locations. When the guild system disintegrated after 1865, shopkeepers in the Grand Bazaar gained more autonomy over what they could sell and wear. However, you can find the same goods today in the bazaar you would find two or three centuries ago. Demonstrating both the changing character of the bazaar and the persistence of certain clusters despite forces of change.